So, Billy, what are you having for dinner tonight? Do you know what? I've actually been using quite a lot of recipes from HelloFresh recently. Yes, love HelloFresh. I know, it's just so easy and like so convenient, especially like yep. busy working mums, so easy to the door and that's it, done. Yeah, I totally agree. And we are pleased to say that this podcast episode is sponsored by HelloFresh, the UK's number one recipe box kit. And we've got a special discount for you too. What I really like about HelloFresh as well is that you do use all of the ingredients. There's like no, no food, food waste. No food waste. Yep. And also you sort of tend to like use different recipes, which I wouldn't normally cook at home. What would you say is your kind of favourite HelloFresh meal? Do you know what? I cooked one the other night for Greg and the kids and it was a butter chicken recipe. Oh, my favourite. Yeah, you know, I, I actually thought of you when I was cooking it. And um, I, I wouldn't normally cook a curry for all of us, maybe for me and Greg, but yeah. it was really mild in spice. So I made it for all of us and actually the kids loved it. All night they was calling it Bill's Butter Chicken. <laughs> That's brilliant. And the best bit is, guys, we have a special treat for you. You can get 50% off your first box and 35% off your next three boxes when you use the code SAM and Billy in capitals. What is the code, Billy? It's SAM and Billy in capitals. Enjoy, Enjoy guys. guys. Hi, guys, and welcome back to the Sam and Billy show with me, Sam. And me, Billy. And we have two very special guests with us today. And one of them is the birthday girl. And so, she's four yes. years old. <laughs> and it's Lois and Mummy Michelle. And hi. today we're going to be talking about Michelle's pregnancy journey. And we have got little Lois on. Do you want to say hi? She's smiling. She's smiling. <laughs> but it's an extra special day because it's Lois's birthday. Are you going to tell everyone how old you are today, Lois? Uh, four. <gasps> four. Four. Oh, so <laughs> <just frozen. laughs> wow. Such Thank a special you. age. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Oh, no, honestly, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much. Like we really appreciate it. Obviously, guys, a little bit of background. I put a post out recently on my Instagram and um I wanted to you know, get someone on the show that didn't have a, a straightforward pregnancy. And, you know, I feel like it's not really spoken about when women have a sperm donor and even like go through IVF. I feel like there is so many different options out there for people. And lovely Michelle, who's with us today, has kindly um, offered to come on and just share her journey with us. So we've got some really interesting questions and okay. we are so grateful to have you on. And the response that I had on Instagram was insane. Like, I feel like people cannot wait for this episode because you're just doing an amazing thing, basically. Oh, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's funny, actually, because they, it, until you do it yourself, you don't realise that there is quite a large community out there and there's yes. a lot of women that are going through it or want are thinking about going through it but don't have anyone to talk to yeah because yeah. like you say it's, it's not really spoken about much it's a bit of a taboo subject yes exactly and i think it's just really good to talk about it so i've always been very open about what i've done from the word go yeah and i Which just think I it's a really positive think, thing yeah i think that's, i was gonna say i think that's really important that you're very open about it and yeah. i'd look, look on your instagram and you know and obviously you've involved lois haven't you the whole journey yeah, completely everything from the yeah. start so um, just so we can give the listeners a bit of a background, if we can go into kind of your journey from the beginning yeah. and like how it all began for you and, you know. So I'd say, honestly, it was nothing that I'd ever even contemplated or thought about before yeah. because in my 20s, as you do, you think I'm going to meet someone. You don't yeah. even think about either egg freezing or yeah. sperm donation, anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, relationships come and gone, nothing had worked out yeah. for different reasons. Um, so I got to like my mid thirties and I was thinking, mm, maybe I should look into egg freeze. And it wasn't something that I really spoke about with my friends much it, because it just, at that time, no one really spoke about it. Yeah. yeah. So, but I looked into it, did a bit of research. I went to a clinic, um, and then they just do a few fertility tests. And I was, I remember I was in Brighton for the weekend with a friend of mine and I got a phone call yeah. and they rang me up and they said, um, Oh yeah, so basically we can't treat you because your fertility is too low. But it was right. really kind of blunt and wow. really like, whoa. Yeah. And yeah. then she just went in the second breath, have you considered egg donation? I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa hang on a minute. Whoa. I literally, wait, wait, all yeah. I was thinking about was egg freezing and now you're yeah. telling me what I may, may not be able to have children at all. So it was a bit of a shock to the system. Yeah, that's... Obviously I had to think about things for a little while. 
And then I did a little bit more research and found that <laughs> oh, bless I found him. another clinic <laughs> which um, specialises in maybe slightly older women. Yeah, they specialise in more quality over quantity. So I, 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 I went to see them. Yeah, had a few meetings with them, and they kind of told me what my options were. And obviously, Donor Sperm was spoken about. Mm -hmm. But again, it was still very new, and yeah, it's something I that I was just like, "Hang on!" I, I, it was really, I was struggling to get my head around yeah. it. When they first said to you, like about donor sperm, did you first of all think, like, "Well, I just want to get my eggs frozen here," like, "Donor yeah, sperm." Yeah, exactly. Like, this... So this is the thing. So I literally initially just went to get my eggs frozen to have a baby at a later stage when yes. I met a partner. Yeah. And then you're telling me, "Oh, egg donation." And then you're saying, yeah. "Oh, donor sperm," and and I think one clinic said to me, "Well, if you want a baby, you should get a wriggle on." And I'm like, well, oh, hang on wow. a minute, no hang way. on a minute. There and I, be I said, some to her, well, serious training for how, it was oh, so how bad. they deal in these sensitive situations. And I said, yeah. um, I said, but I'm not with a partner. I I'm, yeah. don't have anyone. Oh well, um, have you considered egg donation? I was like, what? You it was really bad. It was really bad. So just to um, explain as well to our listeners, so, um, like d when they said like donor sperm, so mm. what? So what would that mean? Like when they said, have you considered donor sperm? Just be for people so basically there, there's two options really you can um get pregnant using donor donor sperm via iui or ivf yeah. iui is when they inject the sperm into you when you're ovulated you still take some of the drugs and everything yeah, yeah. ivf is different that's when they extract the egg put and it in a little sperm. dish yeah. pull it back in yeah right so okay. they're two they're, they're quite different processes um, IUI wasn't an option for me because okay. my fertility was so low. Right, yeah, they said to me, look, we can do it, but I'll be honest, I don't think it's even gonna work. Mm -hmm. You're better off doing IVF. So obviously then I then had to go away with that and thinking, so I've gone from, can I freeze my eggs to, oh God, can I have a baby using donor sperm mm -hmm. and IVF all by myself? So it was quite a wow, lot to think yes, about. And I didn't a have a lot about. of time to think about it yeah. either. Um, because- but, but for you, I guess, like in hindsight, looking back now, was. I guess was, did you ever feel like it's actually not an option for me not to try? Like I want, did you want to, like, I, I want a baby, I, I want, want to, to be, be a mum. Yeah. Yeah. The thought of not being a mum yeah, that's just broke my heart. Exactly. And do you know what? Because when I've been reading your story and sp like looking at people online that contacted me when we was having these conversations, I, I would have, I'd be exactly the same. If I was mm. in your position at that time, I would have, I think I would be exactly the same because the thought of not being a mum would be yeah, like you said, it's heartbreaking. Just heartbreaking. It, I, yeah. I knew this. It, I knew it's what I wanted to do. Yeah, I was fortunate that I did have. I had. I made a career, so I'd saved. Yes. I'd be quite sensible with my money. Yeah, I knew deep down in the back of my mind that I wanted to have a baby at some point. Yeah. so I'd saved my ass off basically, so I could afford the IVF. Yeah. So it isn't cheap yeah, either. No, that's I was going to say to you. So obviously, um, and that's really confusing online. So for like women that are looking into doing IVF with um, donor sperm as well, like is like what is the cost of that? Because it's quite confusing so online. So it's, it's quite. Don't... Do you want to go sit with Auntie Claire for a minute, monkey? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go um, with Auntie Claire for a minute? Go for a little walk. We'll come back in a minute. Do you know there's yeah. There's a little cafe over there. They've yeah. got crisps. Yeah, go on, Dolly. Little look. Yeah, nice. See you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be just here. <laughs> so, can you explain so, to us? So, <laughs> it does depend. Every clinic is different. Okay. But roughly, it cost me about four grand a cycle with, with IVF. Right. Okay. IUI is cheaper. Yeah. Because it's less involved. Mm -hmm. Right. IVF is more of a intrusive it's more intrusive okay. basically and you actually have an operation you get knocked out and everything else so IUIs is cheaper b because of that but I'd say for a full a full cycle including meds blood tests and everything you're yeah. probably looking about four grand a cycle and how many cycles did you do I did four wow. but not but I did two full cycles yeah. and two abandoned cycles so an abandoned cycle is when because you have to go in. So when, when you start IVF, you have to go in every other day for blood tests and scans. Yeah. So that, I mean, that, that's just some trying to hide it from work and yeah. like sneak All out every it, other yeah. day. It's where are you going? Where are you going? It's really hard. It's yeah. really stressful. And then you go, so you, you go in and then, so every, every two days they take your blood and they do an internal scan to see if your follicles are growing. Right. And if they're not growing enough, they make that decision to abandon that cycle. Oh, okay. So I had two of those. Wow. which isn't great yeah. because obviously you're going in and you're just thinking everything's going to be fine. Because also as well for me, 
naively, I, I was looking at IVF as a process to have a baby. Mm. I wasn't looking at IVF as most, most women that have IVF do it because they have been trying and they str have, ha have struggles yeah. having mm -hmm. a baby. Physique, Whereas yeah. I'd obviously, I wasn't, I was doing it a different way. So it was a re real shock to me, even though I knew my fertility was low, whatever that meant. Yeah. It was a real shock when I actually had, tr had trouble conceiving. So it, it's funny because the friends did warn me, oh, yeah. IVF is really tough. I went, no, no, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Yeah. I'll do the IVF and then I'll have a baby. So yeah. you found out all this stuff about yourself and your body that you actually wasn't yeah, aware of Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. And then so the first cycle I had was an abandoned one, which was really hard, really yeah. hard. The mm. second one, I had a very early miscarriage. Oh. The third one was an abandoned. Okay. And the fourth one was nice. Oh, <laughs> oh, that actually gave me goosebumps. You didn't give up, see? No, go. I nearly did. I nearly really? did. I it was I, I was my year of my 40th and I gave myself a break because I just thought emotionally yeah, yeah. I was drained. And but I got through that. You? I'm 45. Oh wow. my gosh, you look <laughs> so young. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say like 32 yeah. or 33. Oh wow, yeah. thanks. You look really like you look amazing. You. Do you know I'm, like, I'm blessed with Mauritian skin, so I think yeah. that helps. Your yeah. skin's amazing, you look Thank great. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so after I turned 40, which was the September, I got to like pass a new year and I just thought oh, I can't do it again. And, I was, and a friend said to me, Look, just do it one more time. So I had the money to do it once more. Yeah. So just do it. I was, you'll always wonder what if, what if. What if. Yeah. And I'm glad I did. Oh, wow. <laughs> so can you just explain to us that feeling when, when they said, well, actually, you know, I know, I don't know if it, how it felt because I know that you said previously you had a miscarriage. Yeah. But when they said like you're pregnant, like what was the. So initial... do you know, in all honesty, I was really excited, but there's that half of you is still waiting for it to go wrong. Yeah, because right. so many things can go wrong, as you yeah. know, through every pregnancy. And you find out you're pregnant so early. You find out so, six weeks. Wow, yeah. so, so, so you feel like you're pregnant forever. It's like yeah. the longest pregnancy in the world. And I guess you want to get and to that like second trimester to be like, right, I've got this. Exactly. Almost, even, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, even up until the day she was born, I thought it was going to go wrong. Oh, you really? just always, don't yeah. worry, I had an amazing pregnancy. I was really lucky with my pregnancy and yeah. I love being pregnant but there was that doubt in the back of my mind I think because you've you've waited so long yeah. and you've gone through so much to have this baby you do get to think you start thinking well how can this be happening, happening to me yeah. this isn't it's real like it, a miracle. Miracle. Yeah. it doesn't feel real yeah it doesn't but it obviously when she came it was the most amazing oh, thing wow. I could just imagine I like, what do I do now oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> so, oh, just, so just going back sorry because I know sorry that I, I do tend no, to kind fine, of so do I so do we <laughs> um, I'm like really interested to know like with the whole um uh, is it donor sperm or sperm donor? Sorry, I'm getting. So I, I want to get yes, right. I know, yeah. so, <laughs> so the person, the man that donates, is the sperm donor, right? I am buying donor sperm, right? right. Okay, yeah. so yeah. do you get to choose? Yeah, this what is the donor fun sperm bit. Yeah. you want. Fun so bit. what was the process? So <laughs> yeah. do you know what? There's actually loads for options. Um, that they're, Denmark's really renowned um, for providing good donor sperm. Um, a lot of people do go to Denmark for it, not physically go to Denmark, but online. Um, the, the clinic that you're using, the fertility, uh, fertility clinic you yeah. use, generally has their own stores as well. So right. you do have options, but I chose to use the London Sperm Bank right. because I rang, I just wanted to talk to somebody about it. And, yeah. and they're lovely, they're lovely girls I spoke to. I rang them, had a chat about it. And literally, you can, you can do it now. You can go online to London Sperm Bank search for donors and it's just like does it bring up an image of no the no it doesn't no like it will okay. say like hair no. color yes eyes. you get loads of information. hair color eye color skin color um height weight um uh, uh religion okay, education yeah. and also so with the london sperm bank some of the men um have the option to write something about themselves oh. so i chose one who wrote a little bit about himself because oh, i really? felt that yeah you felt it's that... weird you feel drawn to somebody that oh i quite fancy him yeah. but even though you don't know who it is who but it it's, is, it's yeah. like you do feel like you're on a dating website but you can't see their i was face. gonna say like yeah. is it yeah a little bit like a dating is website? it is it, literally i would say that it's like a dating website but without the pictures wow. because <laughs> i because I thought initially, should I search for a man who has similar skin tone to me and hair and eye colour to me so she will look more like me? Yeah. But then I just, I, so I started doing that, but I just found myself drawn to men I would find attractive. Yeah. Which yeah. is generally blue eyes, yeah. brown hair, tall. <laughs> 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 and I just, and, 
um, the guy who I picked is actually Australian. Oh, wow. Um, wow. Yeah, so... Aussie it, roots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, um, it is a bit weird because I do look at her sometimes and I think, does she look like me? But do you know does what she, she... Lois Reed really looks like you. Does, does she? Like yeah. you... Does you, she? Yeah. Oh, I'm That's so really, pleased. I mean, I look on your Instagram anyway, and we was discussing it earlier, I was discussing it with the team, and I was like, it, you, she's just like you. Yeah. Oh. Like, and obviously that must be like really it's, nice. It's so, you do you know, know do I don't you? see it though, but a lot of people do say it to me, and I do sort of see it a little bit in, in her, like here and here, and when I look at photos of me when I was younger, yeah. but because she's so much fairer than I am, yeah. um, and her hair's completely different, to mine as well yeah. different hair colour which I was quite surprised at so I thought she'd end up with dark yeah. hair and dark really skin changed. like me it does change yeah, though, yeah. It? But, but, she's only four yeah exactly but, but no oh. she's really like you and just like as well do you so you're I mean obviously I've read like a little bit about your history and stuff and like you know um, how you co- deal with it with Lois mm. so you, you keep her very involved don't you like you're very open about the, yeah. whole, the I know she's only young she's like, only young she's very young but I wanted, I wanted to because she will soon start asking why she hasn't got a daddy. Yeah. Yeah. She role plays mummies and daddies. She knows that yeah. her friends have daddies. So she knows, but mm-hmm. she hasn't asked me yet. So I actually wrote her a book um, just because, just for me and her, yeah. just to say that this is what a donor is. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know, it's a kind man that, you know, that's, that's helped help me yeah. and yeah. explained why she hasn't got a daddy. <clears throat> Excuse me, and explained that what a donor is yeah. and explained that, Families come in all shapes and sizes yeah. and everything. And so we've got that as a little bedtime story. So nice. um, wow. Which I was going to bring it. I completely I yeah, forgot. You so I'm a bit annoyed. It. I forgot to bring it. After this, you'll um, be able to publish that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, I hope so. That'd yeah, be yeah, funny. Everyone's going to want your book. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a lovely but it's idea. Nice, but she read it and I had a friend illustrate it for me and she illustrated oh, wow. it so the main characters looked like me and Lois. That so when I got so the book lovely. delivered, I showed it to her. She said, Oh, it's Mummy and Lois on the front cover. So it's like Mummy and Lois' story that we read which is really nice yeah. which I, don't, I don't think she gets it yet but no, she gets that yeah. like you know there was a little seed and went yeah. into mum's oh, tummy and mum got bigger and I went mean, pop and there's the baby yeah. we, <laughs> had these, we had these conversations about we oh, were talking we're about saying, yeah. the magic seed and pop yeah. we, exactly yeah. the same we speak about this a lot on, on, on the pod and like it's that was the, the only situation. bit I got a little bit tricky uh, I struggled I was like how do I word this yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like yeah. yeah and how do we um, draw it as well. Yeah, yeah. Originally, we drew it as a seed. I went, no, yeah. draw it as a sperm because it is a sperm. It is a sperm. Yeah, yeah. 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 put it what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but yeah, cool. well, I am really open about it, and yeah. I've been very open about it on my social media. I've had quite a lot of women contact me, um, whether it's to say, "Well done, good on you," or yeah. whether it's to say, "I'm looking at doing this, but I haven't got any support." Mm. And what you know, how did you get your get a support network and um, also saying that um, you know I, I want to do it, but I don't think I can, and things like that. So it's it's there's a lot of people out there that yeah it, it, they're thinking about it, but they just don't, don't seem don't to talk about it. And also, like, yeah. haven't got the courage to go and, and do got, it. Yeah, and this is exactly why I wanted to have this topic on the pod because we have so many women listeners, mm. and like I was saying before, mm. it, it isn't always easy for everybody to conceive. And no. There's so many different options out there, and like you coming on and telling your story. We hope and pray, and I'm sure it will help so many other women that are considering. I hope it does. Yeah. That yeah. Are considering it, like you know, I was discussing it as well earlier with a friend, and we were saying like, there is so many women out there that you know that might, may get pregnant with a guy that you know isn't even their partner, or is somebody that you know ends up not being a very nice person, yeah. and they've yeah. got to deal with that whole situation, like. The way you've done it, you've just took it into your own hands, mm. being like, you know, a strong single woman thinking, yeah. actually, I really want to be a mum. I can do this on my own. Um, and without having the troubles of, you know, yeah. uh, exactly. A as, long as, as long as that child comes from a secure home and exactly. there's love in that home, yeah. that's all yeah. they need. Whether you've got one parent or four parents, Absolutely. you know, it, it, do, yeah. it doesn't matter. And I think women do need that courage to go, hey, do you know what? I can do this. I'm yeah. strong. And I think it's, it is really daunting. Don't get me wrong. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's not easy. I'm not going to yeah, sugarcoat it's it. Easy, it's it's yeah. hard, um, but God, it's so rewarding as yeah. well. And Amazing. it's yeah, I, best decision I ever made. Oh, so there we go, listeners. Yeah. <laughs> You're ever thinking about it? Like, so is there any? Is just to, for our listeners that potentially might be thinking of yeah. Um, um, sperm donor, donor sperm. So I'm, I'm <laughs> either or. Um, yeah, either or. Um, having a sperm donor and going through the IVF or the um, IUI. I, IUI. IUI. Yeah. Um, 
what would you say um, advice just to like start that process? Like, I would say, firstly, talk it through with your friends and family. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I wasn't that open about it to start off with, mm-hmm. um, and don't be afraid to get negative reactions yeah. okay. because it is a That's bit a of a shock one. to yeah. people and in the, because people especially people that have had children they know how hard it is mm-hmm. they go oh you're going to do that all by yourself oh hmm, i'm not sure you want to mm-hmm. do that i got quite a lot of negative comments of my friends mm-hmm. um not in a bad way but it was just more like oh it, it, you know it is going to be hard yeah, yeah. And especially when i said about the ivf as well oh, it's going to be really hard are you sure you want to do it and i was like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> how hard can it be yeah obviously it's pretty hard yeah. but you need to get get yourself a little support network mm-hmm. whether it's one person two person t- 10 people get a little support network because that that's invaluable don't feel don't and also so when you go to these clinics and you're sitting there and everyone else is sitting there with their partners mm. they're holding their hand yeah and you're sitting there on your own don't feel bad about that. No. Like, I've got this. Yeah, I've got this. That's I can it. do this. I don't need that person sat next to me. Take a friend. I, yeah. I had a friend come with me a couple of times, which is yeah. fine. Um, but don't be afraid to go to that clinic alone and do it alone. It's it's, it's not a bad thing. Um, also, as well, I will say it is important to do, do your sums because it isn't cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I, I was yeah. fortunate that I, I could save and I did calculate, you know, maternity leave and, yeah. and paying for the IVF. It isn't cheap. Um, so just, you know, make sure you've got the finances to, su- to support Absolutely. yourself, yeah. you know, because that is really important. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, go for it. Yeah. Oh, honestly. Yeah. Honestly, your story is yeah. so inspiring. It is so inspiring. You are incredible. And I just know that you're going to help so many women that have been in the same situation as you or are in currently yeah. the same situation as you and just don't have the courage to start it up it's just yeah. taking that plunge isn't it yes. and make, make a call to a couple of clinics go for a couple of tests get the ball yeah. rolling get the ball That's rolling it. exactly yeah. it's yeah. that initial you don't have you don't have to follow point. it through just yeah. get the ball rolling yeah. step by step anyone can say you don't have to have a count or anything so just to get a feeling an idea um and just yeah like yeah. start the research St- yeah start, start the, the research because like, that's the thing it is i suppose a lot of women wouldn't know where to like no. where to start and, and also yeah. it's, it's not really it's not spoken about it's that much not no. spoken about no. enough it's like, not, it's not spoken and it should be spoken enough. about more and also as well i think it's important to research the clinics because all cl- all clinics are very different so i had two very different experiences yeah mm. the first clinic i went to i had a very negative experience mm. but the second clinic i went to a very positive experience so it, every woman's different obviously i was quite old when i went into doing it so this is why this clinic particularly worked for me um other other clinics that that clinic may not work for other people yeah if your circumstances are different so yeah yeah just do do your research as well mm-hmm. talk to people about it go on to social media because mm. there is a massive community out massive. there yeah. I and mean, when i put that post out I must have had 300 direct messages to my account. Wow. And I think that the Sam and Billy Instagram and email went off, didn't it, guys? It like literally went insane. And that was just from one story. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. this is a whole different community, like you were saying, yeah. that I've never even entered because I've never even thought of... I don't know. It's and just, also, I suppose, because we don't really... We don't really know anyone directly to us. No. That's, that's, that's so for us, yeah. totally. Yeah. yeah, so it's like a new... It's completely different. Yeah, yeah it's a completely new experience. So we had, we had so many different stories as well that people wrote in about. Um, <clears throat> oh, sorry. Red one. My wife and I had three girls all conceived via my wife's eggs, a sperm donor, and I carried. We have a dibbling group on Facebook <clears throat> where we have met... Only online, other children born via the same donor. Oh, oh wow. wow. That's interesting. So, like, brothers and sisters. Yeah. So, yeah. what's that called? Well, dibbling. Dibbling. A dibbling group. So, yeah, so I... Uh, so, you, you can... It's the DC... Oh, DC Network, I think, it's, I think they're called. Um, you can actually apply to them and yeah. find out if your child has donor siblings but obviously they're really limited on the information they can give you because yeah, not everybody course. wants to wants to know or wants to be found out yeah so you can find out um dates of birth and uh, sex basically but i know there are um social media groups that go on and go hi i had a baby on this day this is my donor number da, 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 and oh, then you meet through that so wow. that because I, I didn't know about that so that's actually really helpful that's so for me. interesting isn't it 
Uh, oh, they've gone on to say the girls love to see their photos and although they're not 100% on the details and understand it's crazy how alike some of them look. Oh, wow. That must wow. be, yeah. So I do is... wonder, has she got siblings out yeah. there? Because um, with oh, in the UK, you can, a donor can, father's not the right word, a donor can have up to 10 families. Oh, really? Including siblings. So if I, so when I had um, Lois, they did contact me and said, do you want us to, reserve some sperm for you so that so you can have siblings that obviously that, that come from the same yeah. oh, so if you so, want to have yeah more. so i could have okay. could have had two i mean <laughs> one, okay. one, one's lovely one's, yeah. Yeah. one's yeah. lovely i'm exhausted um, <laughs> but you can do that so if you have got family so for example that um that lady there or was it lady or man that messaged you yeah. said so they've, they've got, got they've got three, three. Yeah. so you could potentially have 30 odd Wow, siblings, all from, wow. Exactly yeah. the same, which is, is crazy. That is amazing. We do not get asked a lot of questions about our donor and the process in which we had the girls. The better understanding people have, the less intrusive at mm. times rude questioning might calm down from Jenna. Yeah, so I, I found there's quite a lot of negative out there as well. So I, I don't know if you saw the article that, that I had um, in the mirror. Uh, yeah, in the I mirror. had a little look, yeah. Yeah, so, no, what? It, so there's a... And so I did an article um, about my journey okay. um, for New Magazine originally, mm -hmm. and then they put it in the mirror. And I thought, oh, wow, this is great. But some of the negative comments I got were disgusting. No Read way. it all for men. Men? No. Mm, things like, oh, you know, sponge off the taxpayers' money, uh, money to have babies. Basically, just saying all single mums sponge off the taxpayers' money. Oh and my just gosh. saying that, oh, you know, how can, how is your child ever going to learn respect so without a father? I, I just can't let Honestly, it's yeah. so bad. But it's just, it's, it's the problem obviously is not when nice you, to read. Yeah. But I know I've done a good thing. I know she's oh not. Oh my gosh. Like, they don't the know me. Amazing. You know. Of my situation. That's not even so. th them comments aren't even anything you could ever even entertain. No, because yeah. Ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people will be listening to this will just be thinking that you're the most amazing yeah. person. You know, you're a wonderful mum. You done like okay. it's just yeah. amazing what you're doing, and even coming and on sharing here and your sharing journey. your journey and your story. Um, and there's, I've got another one here I thought we'll just read out. So at the age of 26, I decided to have a baby on my own rather than trying to find Mr. Right. So via the help of a fertility clinic, I use sper donor sperm and IVF. And now we have a little girl who is almost four years old. I donated my eggs at the same time to help someone else too. And I've donated twice more since, Rachel. Oh, that's, that's, that's quite similar that's, to, to yeah, like your yeah. story to start yeah. with. And then she's donated her eggs. So she feels like she's obviously that's really giving nice back thing to do as well. Yeah. Oh, it's been so amazing yeah. having you on. Honestly, oh, thank you, thank you so yeah. much. You like, are gonna. I'm really excited about me this episode. Too. Yeah. I think people. You're going to help just, so many people. Yeah, oh, going to find so. families amazing. and women. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for having me on. No, thank you. So <laughs> we can much. let you go now and enjoy your birthday. Well, your daughter's birthday. Yay! <laughs> Come in on her daughter's birthday. So. We've actually she'll, got a little cake for her. Oh, thank you. So yeah, when she comes back sweet. from being with her auntie, we'll, we yeah, thought we'd we'll just do a little. Oh, she'll love we'll that. She her. loves cake. <laughs> <laughs> she'll love it. Oh. <laughs> wow! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, dear Lois. Happy birthday to you. Yay! Happy birthday! So we have some really exciting news, guys, and we have a brand new sponsor, and it's one of our favourites, isn't it, Billy? Yes, it's Katie Loxton, and as many of you might already know, it's a beautiful brand that you can personalise bits. I've had quite a lot of stuff from them, actually, over the years. I've had weekend bags, scarves, they do key rings. I think last year we got each other gifts from Katie Loxton and they come in those amazing gift bags as well that you can also have personalised. Personalised, yeah, they're, they're like them gorgeous white bags with the gold bows. bows. That's, so, that's just such a nice, and like, easy gift bag. Isn't it? You've got it's it all there. All done for you and the quality is just amazing. I've got this pink weekend bag and I just use it all the time. Um, and actually they've got something new yeah. that's out and exclusive, which is amazing. Do you, it's actually your birthday month this month. Yes. Do you know what your birthstone is? No. No, I don't actually. So it's actually, I researched this, it's a garnet. 
Oh, wow. It's like a red stone. Yes, correct. So Katie Loxon are doing these little pouches, yeah. vegan leather, and they're doing these little semi-precious stones, well, your birthstones, so it's like all personalised for your birthday. How nice oh, is wow. that? wow. That is amazing. Yeah. I'll have one of those. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and the best news is Katie Loxton are giving our lovely listeners 15% off with our exclusive code, which is Sam and Billy 15 all in capitals. So you can shop the whole collection on the Katie Loxton website at katieloxton.com and get 15% off using the code Sam and Billy 15 all in capitals. Enjoy. <laughs> I've really enjoyed that conversation. I, I just find it so fascinating, interesting. Actually, for such an amazing thing that you can do, like yeah. it, it really isn't spoken about enough. That's what it's I find. It's not. And I, I think the, like our pod and our chat was the, the best way to kind of, I don't know if normalising is the right word, but just a light conversation with someone yeah. that's gone through that experience. And she, I just I just think it's so incredibly like, like um, inspiring. Yeah, inspiring. And because also because so many people wouldn't probably know where to start. Yeah. Like, and it is, it not obviously the process is, you know, like she was very honest about it, but it is a, like the, the getting started with it is just yeah. look, looking and not doing your research, isn't it? That's and like and when she said point. as well, like when she said, I start, you know, when you speak to friends and family at first, like don't be surprised by their reactions. You can imagine people's reactions straight away, can't you? And then yeah, when like, she was saying, like, don't let that like stop you in your yeah. tracks because people will be like Find a it. little bit shocked because it's yeah. not. I suppose it's not it's like not the norm, is it? Yeah, exactly. It's, and people would find it unusual and also yeah. like it. It's but only because it's not spoken about exactly. enough. Exactly. So hopefully, hopefully this will help so many people, so many women that are considering, are considering sperm yeah. donor donor sperm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> enough about sperm. Anyway, <laughs> we have got um, ask us anything. So we've had quite a few questions coming in. We'll pick a few. Um, so first question is, oh, interesting. What's your last dinner, so your last meal? For example, if you was on I, I'm a Celeb or, you know, what would be your last, if you was going on to I'm, I'm a Celeb, what would be your last meal before mm. you went on? Oh, um, I think I would have to have Maybe a really nice Chinese. I knew he was going to say Chinese. Yeah, I love like all the seafood hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, crispy duck, noodles, chow mein. Yeah, mine, dumplings. That would be mine. So I'm going to go opposite, and mine would be a curry. Curry. I would have a butter chicken, rice, <laughs> butter chicken, butter chicken. <laughs> no, got um naan, nice buttered naan. Is it buttered naan? Yeah, yeah. It's garlic or butter butter naan. Um, yeah, that's what I'd have to yeah. have. Flavor. Yeah. Is it hard living far away from each other? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I do. I, I, do you know what? It's really funny because the other day I was thinking to myself, oh, it'd be so like, I was chatting to one of the school mums and she, they're like us, they're really close sisters. She was like, oh, I can't wait till my sister's back from holiday. I can't wait to go and see her after I have a cup of tea. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, yeah, like I miss. Obviously, it's lovely when we do you know when we Get spend together, time like yeah. we we sort of tend to do weekends don't we or stay over and things like that but i i do really miss like just being able to pop around and have a cup of tea just being able to pop around and see the kids do you I know what i mean like they're all growing up so quickly and i feel like weeks just months go past sometimes whiz in and out just yeah, to and, see, hu say hi and you think oh, i'd just like to pop around and just yeah like have a cup of tea or fancy come over for dinner because uh, actually this is the first time i've seen you since the last time we was on the podcast on the pod it's what i'm saying like, <laughs> thank god for the podcast and it is <laughs> like as much as you know we we speak every day like every day like without doubt but it is that it you know we we do live far yeah. from each other and we do. We are busy. We, the boat, all the kids, are, kids at are at school. Commitment. This kind of like section of life, era, whatever you, you know, decade. I don't yeah, know. I'm getting it all wrong. Baby <laughs> brain again. Um, this is going to be probably like the trickiest in terms of like pinning us all down, isn't mm. it? Because like careers are like, you know, steaming ahead. The kids are all in school. There's clubs. There's parties. There's this. There's that. Yeah. There's the partners to think Even of. Even like just, weekends and stuff. Yeah. Kids like, Nelly does her horse riding, like that's what I mean. It, like Rosie has a gymnastic. Yeah, course. there's always something. Something. It is. It's. It is hard. It is hard to. So yeah, it is. It is hard. Going back to the question. Yeah. <laughs> but you just kind of get on with it, don't you? Yeah. So there's. Yeah. It's, it, it. It is what it is, and we just have to try and make. Like, actually, I, there's so many things we need to get getting. We need to get in. 
Paul and Rosie come and set my end of the weekend. Yeah, because they you promised them a sleepover of yours yes. without me. Without you. So we need that. And also yeah. me and your mum need to get a spa day in for all Mum's of our birthday. birthday. Well, yeah. It's going to be same, like for all of us, isn't it? All our birthday celebrations. Yes. <laughs> and then before you know it, it'll be Arthur's birthday. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to sort that out, actually. And the baby will be here. And the baby will be We've got all these milestones. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Lots going on. Um, okay, so next question we've got is, what are Greg and Paul's day jobs? Well, Greg, I think Greg likes to call himself a, a male <laughs> model slash influencer. Really? I was going to say TV <laughs> personality for Greg. <laughs> yeah, I suppose really now, Greg... Career change. Yeah, Greg's <laughs> had a career change. He... I mean, we film, obviously, yeah. for um, Family Diaries. We do that sort of four times a week now. And Greg does actually do some influencing. Like, he does do... I've seen his he posts. He does do posts. Um, Quite like Greg's posts, because they're so, like... They're so raw. Raw. Oh, like, even like, too I, raw. I know that you're probably thinking, Greg, please, there's, like, I don't know, cups in the background yeah, or whatever. But he's, they're so raw, but they're real. Like, it is real. He just like, snaps we're away and he does... Yeah, like, he, yeah. He, he just posts anything. That's probably why a lot of brands... Do like to work with him because he he's he's very real with his posts and yeah. um and we're quite perfectionist when it comes to like how we want it to look on yeah, the gram yeah but <laughs> yeah anyway so Paul's a bit of an entrepreneur a few different bits going on we own a couple of businesses together um and we've recently opened up a, a property company together so and oh, we've got yeah you know so that. there's quite a lot of things going on we're kind of like Paul and I for the last however many years we've been together what will it be seven or eight years this year. Seven years? Eight years? Seven years this year? Seven. Yeah. Well, me and Greg, we've been together Se ten, so. Yeah, so seven or eight? I can't remember. Oh, my gosh. I think mean, it's eight. Eight years this October coming. It's yeah, eight. eight years. Wow. No, it's seven. seven because Paul six. Paul. So it'll be eight because you're pregnant for nine months. Oh, yeah. So Sorry. eight years. Yeah, eight years. Wow. Lies. Anyway, so we have always just been a team, haven't we? Like, we've always yeah. done mm -hmm. and behind the scene businesses, like, we've always got things and stuff going on. There's always... But I think that is actually what it is with the with the two boys, the men, yeah. Paul and Greg, which people don't probably realise as much. Obviously, we're working mums. We don't have full-time nannies. So, no. you know, we, we have to work as a team as with a team. them. Yeah. And it's a lot of, like, planning that we always say, don't we? And, and every week's different, but... We juggle it all between us, all don't of it. we? And everyone has their part. Everyone's doing their bit, and it just because let's say if the to... men worked Monday to Friday, nine to five office, we jobs, would not be able to do a wouldn't. fraction of what we do. What we wouldn't. We do. So it's like, yeah, I suppose they've had to take one for the team in a set. Well, Paul, not so much anymore. But when we was filming, yeah. the Mummy Diaries, he was like, literally, I've had to drop everything to basically be on this show because yeah. people, I think, now people realise like. Filming the Mummy Diaries, which is now obviously the Family Diaries, mm. is four Ooh. days of the week, nine months of the year, with a couple of breaks here and yeah, there. It is full, full on. on. You possibly can't go and have another full-time job. And although, you know, it is filming is what we're doing, and it can that might be work commitments, but it's also it, that is a job for us as well. Absolutely, like, because there's also a lot that you know a lot of time goes into it. And anyway, planning. yeah, planning. Yeah. Anyway, last question. Um, what do you think is the best age for having children? I'm 26 and I'm ready now. But my partner wants to wait another five years. Do you know what? I, I, it's a, that's a tricky one because yeah. we had ours quite young. Well, I I fell pregnant with little Paul almost six months after meeting big Paul. Like, yeah. How quick is that? That is really a, that's quick. a quick baby. <laughs> and and that but that's the thing. Like at that time, what is right? When is the right? When age is the or? right age? Everyone's different. I would. I, I was pregnant with Nelly at 22. I had her when I was 23. Yeah. So that was... So what was that? I had Paul when I was 24. Yeah. yeah. But I think to myself, looking back to my old, like, 23-year-old yeah. self, it feels really young. But, but, at, but the time, at the time, I was like, right, I'm ready for to be a mum. Yeah. It's strange, isn't it? Same here. But then some, some women want to be in their 30s or... Some women, women even in their late thirties, like it's, it's, I don't, it's a really hard question. But it then I guess here, what what feels like the issue is, is that she's ready at twenty six. He wants to wait five years. She she's might thinking, not want to, yeah. no, I'm ready now. My body's ready. Like she's in her headspace to have a baby. I think that's a really tough one. I think that kind of situation can put a strain on a lot of relationships yeah. because. If one if one of you is ready and one is the other, then who who's yeah, who's, who's in the right to take yeah. up? You know. 
being a woman, you know, you're carrying the baby. We, yeah, we're going to sit here and be biased. Because, yeah. like, guys, you haven't got a carried baby for nine months. Yeah. You can carry on doing your thing. You know, you haven't got a push. No, <laughs> you haven't got a breastfeed. I, or... I think that sometimes, like, listen, it has to be a joint. In, in, but then on the flip side of that, we're sitting here saying that. Yeah. If you was with a partner that was really unhappy about being about you having a baby, would you want to bring a child into that environment? Because mm. they might go down that thing of always, you know, like stre- like yeah, having a baby can want, bring stress mm. and strain in a relationship. If that other one isn't committed anyway, the the guy, the other one. The other guy, <laughs> no names. No, yet. if the guy isn't committed, then they might, that could backfire on you, couldn't it? Like, I think every situation is different, <sighs> isn't it? I not say to that one, because, yeah, like, who is in the right? But then again, as a woman... I guess, like, even uh, we've had Michelle on today, you are limited with your time. Mm. We are limited in terms of our eggs, fertility our eggs and fertility. And Men yeah. aren't really, you know. Look at Bernie Eccleston. Didn't he have a baby in his 90s just recently? Yeah. You know, you can be mad. Men can just keep going. <laughs> yeah. It's different for it's women. It's really, it's, it's oh yeah, it's a, it's a real tricky one. I think if I was in that situation and I really wanted to have a baby with my partner, wasn't so sure. I think I'd probably just do it anyway. Well, like trap. Yeah. <laughs> Honey trap. Honey, baby trap. Baby trap. <laughs> no, I'm being totally honest because yeah. at the end of the day, like like you said, fertility. Fertility. Your being egg, pregnant. Yeah. And if you're ready, like just, yeah, do it. It's never a right do time. It. It's always a shock <laughs> to the system anyway. Yeah. They'll get over it and then they'll love that baby more than anything in yeah, the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right. Um, I don't know if that's the right advice, but you know we're just putting yeah. it out there. But, but yeah, it's not. It's not um, legit professional advice. It's just. <laughs> it's just our opinion. She's thinking it. <laughs> we know she's all. We all know she's thinking it. Yeah. Didn't you? <laughs> Okay, so that's it today, guys. Um, that was such an amazing episode. I yeah. really enjoyed that. You know, really, really, really well. good, yeah. And thank you so much for listening, as always. Um, and also, like, today's topic was obviously different and the first time we'd done something like that. And we want to hear from you guys if there's any other topics. Yes, that anything that you want, you us, want to, us to... Or even, like, any any guests in particular you'd like yes. us to chat with or... Just, you know, we're open to look at anything. And if it works, it works. So get your um, topics and ideas over at the at Sam and Billy Instagram. And um, thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe. And don't forget, guys, we are on YouTube as well. So you can follow and watch us on there too. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Bye.